Hey everybody, welcome back. It's business and it's time to start the Minotaur show. I meant to have this up for July 4th, but things got in the way as they always do. And uh, I wanted to get this on July 4th because, you know, it's British. And that's what July 4th is all about, right? So I personally feel like this is the most dangerous ship in the game in a close quarters situation. And uh, it's probably one of the best ships all around in the game. Um, you know, there's just, there's so much that this ship can do, especially from a defensive posture, um, you know, having torpedoes and the, the ability to single fire them, um, as, you know, on either side, eight of them, which is amazing. I mean, that's a, that's a huge amount of, uh, <laughs> damage potential in the water. So, um, going on to this match here, uh, you may notice something a little different on the side there. It's actually an 11 v 11. It's not a full match, which was a little weird. And, um, Unfortunately, at this point in the game, um, you know, I'm making a push to just get into a spot here between uh, B and C, and I'm, I'm calling for radar, and the thing is that this, this Shimikaze just capped B with no issue whatsoever, and the Moskva did not do anything about it at all, despite clearly having the ability to do so, and I don't know what the hell it is about radar cruisers, but... There's just so little communication on one of the most important aspects of the game, and it's really goddamn frustrating when you're trying to figure out if you need to move in or if you even can move in without getting completely blapped to oblivion. So um, that kill was in the Thunder of Guns video, of course, so there's the setup for it. But um, yeah, so this is actually a pretty damn good spot for the Minotaur, I think, uh, depending on, of course, I, the, the variables are always there. Uh, in regards to whether or not, um, you know, the team is, the enemy team is going to be pushing in or, you know, that sort of thing. So whatever the best, whatever that best spot is, I think is more dependent on not necessarily a specific location in the map, but where the enemy is specifically. So it's, it's less about the spot in the map, more about where the team is, the enemy team is. So I uh, decided to throw down here against the Henry which is the one cruiser you really, really, really got to be careful of in uh, the Minotaur because the Henry is the only regular cruiser <clears throat> crunched at Stalingrad um, that can over that can overmatch the bow, uh, the 16 millimeter bow of the Minotaur, and I've done it to people and I've had it done to me where you know get blapped through the front and it hurts like hell. Um, you know, it can overmatch and do some serious uh, citadel damage uh, right through the nose. So you got to be damn careful about that. But uh, at the same time, the Henry gives up some nice damage to these shells. And you know, as we see here in Yamato, um, I mean, I, I haven't really done anything and we're already at 80,000 damage. So it's pretty damn good. And so long as you just have that 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 broadside of an enemy battleship, you know, especially if it's a tier 10, God, they give up damage so quickly. And um, we'll see some more of that in a moment. But uh, we do have two games for you, by the way, and both of these are milestone games for me personally, and uh, they were really uh, quite intense. So uh, we'll get to more of that as we go on, obviously. But uh, taking shots here at the enemy Iowa, and um, still kind of waiting for my team to, you know, maybe push up a bit. Um, looks like we're going to have somebody push through. Uh, C uh, looks like an Azumo here. Uh, it does look like there's also a Bismarck uh, due north of me uh, on the what is that the the B line there. Um, he looks to be AFK, so not sure if that's going to be the case when you know a minute from now or ten minutes from now, whatever the situation is. But uh, that's something you got to keep in mind because a lot of times people crash. They try to restart the client, go back and forth, whatever, and then they finally get into the game like 10, 12 minutes in. I've seen it plenty of times, and unfortunately I've lost games to AFKs who get Solo Warrior. And god, that sucks. But uh, as you saw there too, you know, the turret traverse of the Minotaur really allows it, and the rate of fire allows it to uh, engage and disengage up multiple opponents rapidly so that's uh that's a huge advantage for the ship um in any given situation but especially uh if you're up close uh, being able to handle much more than you otherwise would be able to in any other given ship so uh throwing the i threw the torpedoes down there towards the that gap there uh through b and just happened to get some 
some damage out of it. I, I really didn't expect anything to happen um, other than maybe the Yamato turning in, which is what I was uh, pretty much... I, I was really anticipating that because I wanted to put down the smoke and just, you know, see if we could focus him down a bit with our guns, but uh, he decided to take some torps, and so that was that. But uh, switching over to the other Montana... or I'm sorry, the Yamato now, and again, we're at about a 145,000 damage, and... You know, aside from landing a couple torps, it doesn't really feel like anything's happened. And that's one of the craziest things about this ship is that over a rather short period of time, you'll look back up and you'll be like, holy crap, I just did 90,000 damage in like, you know, 65, 75 seconds. And that's... <laughs> the way this, this damage stacks with this ship is just nuts. But uh, again, I'm allowed to stay here and continue working on enemy targets, and uh, there's a Moscow over there, definitely want to try to get some more damage on him while I have his broadside. Uh, the shell pan on this, especially at range, isn't going to be all that great, and certainly not enough to, uh, well, I mean, there, there may be an odd citadel here or there uh, against, you know, some enemy, or the tier tank cruisers at range, but um, I think it's one of those things you shouldn't really try to expect, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, Yamato is turning out a B, where losing a few ships, they're losing a few ships. At this point, we have no more destroyers, and they have just one. And then we just lost another ship. So we're down a fair bit, uh, two caps to one, and a few hundred points there as well. And it looks like uh, the Azumo on my team is going to be moving up and trying to engage the Henry here. He's He's got about a third of his life left, and uh, yeah, so we get... Another tour pit, and now we have Confederate and High Caliber, so sweet, 180,000 damage, and looks like the Yamato is flooding out a bit, so engaging the Bismarck because I have nothing else to do um, until I can get around to the Henry. Uh, might as well just try to shoot this guy, and hopefully, you know, if he comes back around before, you know, he ends up getting killed, assuming he gets killed, um, well, hopefully he's in a better position to get killed quickly. So. Uh, don't prioritize the AFKs if you can avoid it. Like if you have the chance, if you're not, uh, if, like there's, if this Henry was wasn't here, obviously I'd be shooting at the the Bismarck. But the important part is trying to get rid of the ship that's doing damage to the other ships on your team or yourself. Um, unfortunately, the Henry did set some fires on the Azumo, and uh, I think he's burning right now. But I'm trying to tell, um, or I'm about to tell the Izumo to not worry, and you know, the other guys on the team not to worry about the Bismarck. The Minotaur is uniquely suited for this. Well, not necessarily uniquely, but you know, as far as the tier 10 cruisers are concerned, because in a situation where any other, this group, or I'm sorry, cruiser would be having to throw the widespread torps, or not widespread, but the, the tighter torps, you know, we've got the, uh, the single file torps here, and that allows us to be much more precise and in regards to an afk that's fantastic because you know they're going to go exactly where you send them um which is on target so even against a uh, a ship at uh, like a bow forward position like that you can still rack up multiple uh, torp hits so awesome unfortunately the azumo died so again we're in a bit of a tight spot here because it's five ships to four they have a 300 point lead and I just beached like an idiot so <laughs> uh, might as well just go ahead and smoke here I I just yeah lost track of exactly how close I was to that uh, island but uh, curiously the Yamato chooses to switch his attention to somebody else which to, well there we go with the death strike yay <laughs> uh, I, I'm kind of I'm not entirely sure why he is pulling away and shooting at you know other targets, but I'm desperately trying to knock him out here because we still need to get into this match a bit more, um, you know, clear off the the Yamato. And the thing is, I'm not trying to do this for damage. I'm not trying to do this for anything other than making sure that his guns are gone. Like the less a Yamato or any ship is shooting, the better off you and your team are. You don't want people to shoot. You want them dead. So. <laughs> Who cares about the damage and everything? Just get them dead, and there we go. So, um, yeah, it's it's like I said though, it's amazing once you get uh, the side of a, a ship, and like the Yamato has some sweet spots for the ship to hit. You know, racking up five, six, seven thousand damage salvos, 
every 3.2 seconds or you know 2.8 seconds because I run main battery reload, um, which is pretty damn nice by the way on the ship. But uh, and the only reason I run adrenaline rush is not for the main battery but for the torpedoes, because trust me that makes a huge difference uh, having like you know at low health having 15, 17 uh, second faster torque reload makes all the difference. But we are in the situation here where. Uh, should be getting rid of the Moskva right about mm, now. Right about now. There we go. <laughs> and um, this is the scenario that you want to have happen when you're facing other tier 10 cruisers if it's not a Henry. You want them to shoot AP at you because you can bounce that. HE is the, the scary, scary shell type uh, from the Zal, the Moskva, the Des Moines, the Wister, all of these ships. Uh, that's not the one you want to be taking from any of those ships because they can't overmatch you. Like the Moskva can overmatch 15 millimeters of bow armor, that's it. But at 16 millimeters, you're safe. They can still knock out turrets and stuff like that. As I overturn and nearly get dev struck, three shells ended up hitting the water there, and that should have killed me. That really should have uh, dev struck me, but holy shit, that was close. And then I overturn again right at the wrong time, and again just by the skin of my teeth get through and it was right at this time that I realized wow this is my first 300,000 damage game <laughs> so I was really trying to go for a crack in here and I ended up getting a couple hits but somebody finished them off right at the end but 318,000 damage you after 9,000 plus matches first time doing that yeah 3,400 base xp and uh, take a look at the amount of shells that <laughs> were fired that's a hell of a lot so Ooh, I, uh, I had to take a nice break from the game. Actually, I think I ended the stream at that point. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't play any further at that point. It was nuts. So, jumping right into the next match here. This is, uh, much more recent. I recorded this, uh, July, no, sorry, uh, June 12th. So, this is, uh, a bit more recent, and we have a cyclone going on. We've got, um, a Yagumo here at A who's capping, so... Uh, I've got a buffalo again to the south of A, and I really am hoping that we get radar <laughs> from him. I don't know why it's taking so long to use it. Um, you know, it, it's not necessarily... I, I guess to me it's one of those things where if you have somebody in the position to be able to respond to a cap, sometimes just revealing people is enough to make them run or panic and reveal themselves in a manner that... Uh, has them take a huge amount of damage like if they go broadside in front of everybody all of a sudden because they're spotted um people react differently when they get spotted it's um you know it's just kind of a weird thing but uh, even if you don't have shots as the radar cruiser then you may be able to influence something there just by getting them spotted with your radar so um i wanted to get into a good spot here um i'm really worried about getting cross shot uh, to my my starboard side here, but uh, we have some nice juicy targets here. Uh, we've got our guys on the one line, well two line, that are moving around the island. And I'm not sure if you took a look at the damage there at the start, but uh, I cut out about the last 65 seconds, and now we're already up to 90,000 damage. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, these guys are keeping everybody here. They, there's three battleships there, and all say it's the Conqueror and now the Dead Republic. And uh, what's amazing about this is that my teammates there on the two line are keeping these guys pinned and forcing them to take the lesser of two evils, which is me. So um, because they can't really turn out and uh, they're not necessarily working together because they're going single file in here. And by the way, I did send Torps into B to just hopefully, you know, hoping against hope there to get something against the... Uh, the Hindenburg that's coming in or the DD that's capping so that's something I gotta watch out for here and the cyclone sets and we're up to 160,000 damage and uh let's see we've got <laughs> still got some guys there on the two line they're pretty much in the same spot as they were and at some point here I'm I know I'm going to be dealing with the Hindenburg and that's his uh hydro right there so we know he's close and I'm terrified here because I have no idea where the threat is going to come from um, like if that all states is suddenly going to show up 
right in front of me if the Hindenburg is going to be in a totally different position and already ready to shoot at me. I mean, I know based off of the fact that I was hydroed, um, it would make sense that he was exactly where he was. So I was just trying to not really do anything, and it may seem silly for me to to pop my smoke here. Uh, two things. I just need to get to at least 5.88 or 5.9 kilometers to uh, get out of his hydro range, but also um, assuming his hydro uh, went away, the, the big thing was that I needed to just get to 5.4 kilometers so I could uh, fire from smoke without being spotted. So that was the uh, big concern for me there. And uh, we have the destroyer uh, wailing away into the smoke as well and just trying to keep some shells uh, and some pressure on the Hindenburg to move him out so I can go back to hopefully helping these guys here as we lose another two ships in the, the last you know, 20 seconds, so that's no good. Um, now I only sent one set of torps on my port side in the event that I'm going to need them, uh, assuming that there's a, a close quarters situation here against the Hindenburg or any of the other ships that have come up. So I just wanted to send those torps out just in case, and seems like we've... Uh, created a little bit of breathing room for ourselves, so that's good. And just gonna wait here, and there's the Alsace, uh, Conqueror goes down, but again, we lose another ship, and just gonna throw Torps out again. Um, I always have problems getting Torps against the French ships because of that damn speed boost, They're the battleships uh, especially. Oh man, that's uh, that can be frustrating at times, so uh, throw the torps out there, hopefully help our, our battleship there. I think it's uh, an Alsace as well. So again, just railing away with the main battery into the side of uh, the, the armor there. Now, check this out. This is going to be super, super close. So we get spotted by Hydro or something, and I'm guessing it was Hydro right, right after the Alsace fired. So he could have killed us if he just waited like another half second to, uh, before he shot. But thankfully, they didn't communicate or say, hey, I'm coming back into hydro range of this guy, blah, blah, blah. So we lucked out big time there. Um, the Alsace goes down. Awesome. Now it's time to duke it out. Or actually, the Alsace is about to go down. Um, and it's time to duke it out with the Hindenburg close up. So again, he can't damage us with AP the way he wants to. We just bounce and bounce and bounce and get close. I I wasn't really sure if he was going to be turning out at all, so I kind of, well, I obviously screwed that up, but um, we defeat this turret traverse by being able to get the torps off and then cut back hard to port when he's ready to fire. All bounces. Beautiful, man. Enemy cruiser destroyed. I nearly fucked it up, but beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in those situations, it's it's always, you know, that that situation where you you could screw it up, but somehow you come through. So that was one of them. Oh my god, I was so it, I was just crazy excited that we we got through that without embarrassing ourselves. So yay. Um so I went ahead and cap B and I turned around, uh teamed up with the Missouri here. Um I know it's a DM there. And I know he can see me through smoke, and now so can the NC because he's able to uh, to obviously see me. So whatever, doesn't this doesn't matter to me at all because the DM used this radar, and now I can stay in here and help out without as much fear of being of being annihilated. So the Alsace is still in the back; he's coming up a little bit. But um, basically, what should be happening here is, as you see, the Missouri should be able to fire upon the DM and overmatch his bow while I obviously work on the NC and finish him off as we have shells come in from the all from behind me and finish off the NC. So the uh, rune is focusing on the, uh, the Missouri, but I think about now both he and the DM are focusing on the all -safe. So they switch targets there and I switch targets over to the, the rune to see if I can um, try to knock out some of, some more of his health and hopefully make it easier for our battleships to nail him, but um, I don't really do well against runes for whatever reason. You know, some ships I just mm, doesn't just don't match up very well against, and the rune is one that uh, has always caused me problems. So uh, recognizing the potential issue here, as the uh, Missouri is in, he's he's rather low health, and it looks like we're about to lose. Oh, yep, there's the Alsace, he's down. Um, I basically am 
putting my ship out there so he's not the only one being shot at. I'm trying to make better use of uh, what remains of the team's uh, health pool. So if he sh if the DM is shooting at me, he's not shooting at the, the Missouri, and if that means that uh, the Missouri can overmatch his bow and punch through and kill him off, great. I mean, he's at so low health right now, that should be no problem whatsoever, as the, the rune and well yeah but now both ships are pretty much behind cover so i should be able to go spotted or unspotted here in just a second and continue raining shells down on the dm um there we go finally so unfortunately it looks like the missouri was uh, switching back and forth between targets i think he he must have assumed that i was going to be able to kill the dm uh with the shells that were going in and uh unfortunately he dies <laughs> and i was like you gotta be shitting me. This is this is gonna be the way it ends. I mean, after all that, that was. I mean, it was a crazy matchup to this point, anyways. But uh, I just panic drop torps into B because I might as well get everything out while I can. I pop my hydro and I'm going right after the rune because I don't have any other option. So um, we don't have enough time. I'm I'm not in a position to be able to run away. I'm not in a position to be able to do anything but fight. And so it's time to go after the rune. We get him spotted there. And naturally around this time, that's also when we start getting shells from the Des Moines. So uh, I have no idea how the hell I'm going to do this. And we're doing actually all right damage here to the rune. You know, getting the shells where they need to go apparently. And uh, trying to maintain a, a really particular angle here to protect myself uh, from doing or from taking massive damage and there's a huge thing right here and i'll have to explain it afterwards but i decide to go all in and we get the guns on them right as the torps find the des moines and we Any end it with a double strike We've got two of them. hell yes 360,000 damage for my number two match with over 300,000 damage so oh man that was i mean look at the amount of shell hits i had holy shit that is that is absolutely insane i i've never farmed like that before I mean, when when does anybody get that type of opportunity? So, almost 3,500 base XP, and what I was going to say before, um, it was a calculated risk to go broadside because the rune has a maximum output of 17,700 damage out of the front uh, guns there if you triple sit me, and that would have left me with about 1,000 health at the time, so wow, that was close. But thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Take care.